This week, let's discuss warts. As a primary care dermoscopist, you will see lots and lots of patients seeking help with their warts, and the diagnosis is usually easily clinically. What about dermoscopy and warts then? I'll let you into a little secret about these videos and making. I use these to help ensure I'm not telling you porkies. I spend often two days a week researching my topic before putting pen to paper. What do my expert companions have to say about the dermoscopy of warts? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Two lines, half a paragraph, and two paragraphs. Not a lot. They summarise the dermoscopy of warts like this. Red and or black dots, with or without a white halo. And that's it. I'll be reviewing these books in a future video to see if they might be useful to you. So watch this space. Join me with eight patients in a clinic of mine who presented to me with a possible diagnosis of warts. You can then see the demoscopy and the various diagnostic and management conundrums each one presents. Sound good? Let's crack on. Over six months, this 15 year old young lady had this thing growing on her toe. It was now causing pain when wearing shoes, as you can imagine. Have a look at the demoscopy. What features can you identify? Note the yellow hard keratin head, its filey form nature, and the beautiful, if you like that kind of thing, hairpin vessels within the fingers of keratin. The darker red areas are hemorrhages. Note the base isn't thickened. And in her age, with these features, this is a filey form wart and nothing else. The current UK NHS NICE guidelines state, don't treat warts if asymptomatic, but consider treatment if painful, cosmetically unsightly, they request treatment, and if the wart is persisting. This is a lot of get out clauses. Basically, it's your call in discussion with your patient whether to treat or not. But how? Here's your five options. Do nothing. Give her the reassuring advice. 50% of warts will get better within 12 months and 80% within two years. It's called benign neglect. I prefer the term masterly inactivity, as it sounds more positive. You could use a gel with salicylic acid in it, which are keratinolytics applied daily after soaking in warm water and then covering the wart. 70% of warts resolve using this method over 12 weeks. Is this an option for her? She didn't like the idea. Cryotherapy. But do you have it available? Another option is curatage and cautery. You could use this under a local anaesthetic, but I'd be worried about a permanent scar. And do you have the necessary skills? Finally, option five. You could refer to secondary care with all the current attendant delays in her being seen and treated. After giving the options, after counselling about what to expect, pain and time for it to drop off and failure rates, I gave it a good 30 second freeze. It took five weeks for it to drop off, leaving this behind. That's not bad for a single freeze. Your second patient in our clinic is this 45 year old gentleman who came with this scaly nodule on his left knee. How would you describe it on demoscopy? Note the keratin scales and the small dot vessels within a white surround, a couple of darker red dots peripherally representing some hemorrhage. This is a frog spawn pattern, small short loop vessels pointing up at you appearing as dots surrounded by the white keratin. This is a common wart. However, look closer at his leg and tattoo. What can you see here? There's small little pink papules throughout the black outline of his tattoo. Here's the demoscopy of a few of them. All are similar frog spawn patterned. The human papillomavirus is a DNA virus, and by touch and impregnation, it gets into skin keratinocytes. I can imagine the black tattoo needle was either already contaminated or more likely went through a small wart on his skin and seeded the wart virus along the black outline. There are over 150 different human papillomavirus serotypes, and each have their own predilection for skin sites. Some are oncogenic, Hence, human papilloma virus causing cervical and penile cancer, for which there is now a vaccine given to young people to try and prevent this. How would you manage this gentleman? What's important to remember when treating viral warts is that it's the patient's immune system that clears the human papilloma virus. If you test for virus in the surrounding normal looking skin, you'll find the virus in the keratinocytes. Our destructive treatments such as salicylic acid and cryotherapy don't actually kill the virus, rather they destroy the keratinocytes the virus is squatting in. We make it homeless and more vulnerable to the patient's own immune system to clear the infection. For the patient, this was a mild cosmetic issue, a nuisance. There was no pain or other symptoms. You could use salicylic acid, messy but possible. I chose to freeze a couple of the larger warts and await hopefully natural resolution. Patient 3. This 78 year old gentleman came in with many separate keratosis on his back. However, one was irritating in particular. Can you see which one stands out? Let's look at its demoscopy. They aren't called separate warts for nothing sometimes. There is an overlap in the histology between warts and separate keratosis and they can coexist. Note here the typical well demarcated border, the fissures and 
rigid pattern at the upper pole, becoming more fat finger-like here. And if you don't follow that, you need to watch this video on the dermoscopy of seborrheic keratosis. However, these finger-like, finely formed projections are very wart-like, aren't they? There are tips of hard keratin, some dark red hemorrhages, and loop vessels within the white keratin. This could be a wart virus infecting a seborrheic keratosis, causing these changes. Does it matter? Not really. Both are benign. How would you treat it? First, we can reassure him it's nothing cancerous. As it was irritating him, catching on his shirt, I gave it a quick 30 seconds of cryotherapy, and it dropped off and settled down within a couple of weeks. This 31-year-old comes to see you with a six-month history of this thing growing on her upper lid, which is now causing her intense irritation every time she blinks. Watch the video and note the dermoscopy. What is it and how would you manage it? It's typical for a finely formed wart, don't you think? A nice keratin cap and vessels rising up the fingers with no thickening or changes at the base. Unless you can perform cryotherapy, you'll be referring her, I think, either for curatage or cryotherapy. Nice guidelines state that facial warts should not be routinely treated in primary care. But those are only guidelines handrails rather than tram lines. For finely formed warts, I find cryotherapy very effective. You tailor the cryotherapy freeze to the skin thickness. The eyelid has the thinnest epidermis on the body. So after cancelling, I gave it a careful 10 second freeze. This is the photograph she sent me four weeks later. Note the small patch of hypopigmentation. Melanocytes don't like being frozen and often die, resulting in skin hypopigmentation. So bear this in mind when using cryotherapy in patients with skin of color. Patient five. This 82 year old came with a three month history of this scaly patch on his nose. Here's the thermoscopy. What do you think and what would you do? There's some erythema and some clear white hair follicles suggesting early actinic keratosis changes. There's some radial hairpin vessels. Keratin in centrally with dark red hemorrhages. So it could be a wart, but is it? The other differential diagnosis to consider with warts is squamous cell cancer. You can get warts at any ages, even in octogenarians. However, the possibility of a cancer increases with age. The predictive factor of any clinical sign is based on the underlying probability in the population. How common are SCCs in patients less than 30? Negligible. In an 82 year old, much higher. So what would you do? I hope you did what I did, which was refer on the cancer care pathway as a possible SCC. Could you have given some cryotherapy to this? I think you would be very brave. Cryotherapy doesn't give any histology, and this is on the nose, and missing a squamous cell cancer here would not be good news. Secondary care also were uncertain and scooped it out, histology showing it was a VARA wart. It just goes to show you warts occur at any age. The management, however, was correct. Patient six, what would you do about this papillomatous warty growth on this octogenarian's left upper chest wall? It's been slowly growing for six months. It's not very scaly, but it is elevated, firm and growing. Could it be a BCC or even an SCC? What would you do if you didn't have dermoscopy? Well, here's the dermoscopy for you. It's lobular, but very symmetrical in pattern and would do nicely for a frog spawn pattern throughout. This isn't BCC-like or an SCC. After discussing with the patient, we agreed a 30 second freeze with cryotherapy and two months later, it's gone. But note again, the hypopigmentation. I think without dermoscopy reassuring me with the frog spawn pattern, I'd have been inclined perhaps to refer him along the cancer care pathway. Dermoscopy once again makes a difference. We used to run a monthly walk clinic when patients would queue up for cryotherapy. We've stopped doing this now and advise patients if no symptoms, then no treatment is needed as they resolve with time. Hand and plantar warts are most common at the ages of 13 to 14. If they want treatment, we encourage over-the-counter purchase of salicylic acid treatments and provide a leaflet regarding using this. A few children still come wanting treatment having failed with that topical treatment. This young lady was keen for cryotherapy. These are the points I cover in counselling. It's painful and for the first few days afterwards, sometimes with blistering, I don't give cryotherapy to the under sevens and after that assess the child on their merits. I've had parents trying to persuade their children to have the cryotherapy when they are clearly reluctant. The child is your patient, not the parent. It doesn't always work and cryotherapy is only considered to have failed after five treatments at two to four weeks apart. If the keratin surface is very thick, consider using a sharp blade to carefully power down the surface to improve the freeze deeper down into the skin. This is most often needed for plantar warts. When it gets painful or starts bleeding, stop pairing. In children, I go gentle initially with only a 15 second freeze to start with. I count the time from when the wart and one to two millimeters around the wart is frozen white, not before. When a patient has a lot of warts, you don't have to treat them all. I tell them we can't kill the virus, but we can help the body find the infection and clear it through their own body's immune defense response. 
And don't forget to follow up your patient a few weeks later because your patients are your best teachers, but only if you choose to listen to them. I hope these patients have got you thinking. I love masterly inactivity and the principle of first do no harm. Demoscopy will give you that confidence in the diagnosis and help you plan the appropriate management for your patient. As always, comments welcome. And until next week, nanu nanu. Training a primary care demoscopist for every general practice.